What's up everyone, welcome to Workshop Rebuild. In today's episode, I'll be sharing with you guys how to repair or rebuild leaky charge check valves from the Students Friends Series 15 Model 90 U-Pump. So let's dig right into it. Right here on the table, I have everything that involves the charge check valve from the Sundstrand hydraulic motor. This right here happens to be the old or defect charge check valve. As you guys can see, the valve on the top does not return. So from the side, this is flush. But everybody who has a garden tractor or this pump within a certain machine will want this valve to return. This valve does not return at the moment, and I have a feeling the spring within this charge check valve is weak and or the O-ring is defect within this valve. So in today's video, I will be focusing on how to take this valve apart, and this is what it will look like later on. I will share with you guys how to take it apart and what products you will need to repair your own charge check valve. I have a digital vernier off to the side to measure the O-rings that came off of this, I already confirmed that all the O-rings that are being used in this video are the correct sizes. So if you guys want to do this yourself, you guys can check the description down below and buy these O-rings yourself with the sizing of these O-rings. I have safety glasses off to the right. I will be using a bench grinder for a couple minutes, uh, not too long. And then I will be heading over to the vise. I will grab a file to just touch it up. After that's all done and we confirm what the damage is within this check valve, then I might need a welder to finalize this process. Since this check valve is still together, you might want to understand what is within this check valve. So off to the right, I already took one apart and I will share with you guys what it consists of right here. We have the main valve body. This is basically a two-way valve, so it is closed or open and the way to close it or open it is with this plunger or piston within this valve. This piston has the O-ring which will allow this valve to leak over time if this O-ring cracks, is defect and or if it's just not the correct size which it originally was. This piston will move up and down within this valve and it will look something like this. So when you push this down, you want it to retract. And at the same time, the O-ring is a sealing mechanism within this valve body, which does not allow fluid to push up and out of this piston area. Since the piston is within the valve body right now, this would be the closed position. If we would push it down, it would be in an open position, which would allow fluid to divert into the other channel which is up above. This will allow your machine to be freewheeled and or pushed around without any restriction throughout the hydraulic motor. So when I take this piston back out, the next thing that lies below the piston is the ball bearing. Another indication for a weak hydraulic motor would be possibly a worn out or damaged ball bearing. When you inspect this ball bearing, you do not want any flat surface throughout the diameter of this ball bearing where it seals within this valve body. This ball bearing will be placed inside of here and there is a machined surface where this ball bearing will have to sit in. If that machine surface inside of the valve body is damaged, it must be repaired and or the valve body would have to be replaced. To push the ball bearing and the piston up or to retract it into the neutral position, we have a spring. Another defect on the valve body could be the spring. The spring could be defect and or over time the spring may get weaker. So this spring which I have in my hand seems to be just fine so I can reuse this spring. The last thing that closes all of this off on the valve body is the cap. This cap has a recess down below which will hold the spring and that positions the spring to be centered on the ball bearing. The cap closes this all off 
And once we look at the final product, the cap is pushed in and the valve body is crimped around this cap on the end. Before I made this video, I had to test the internal O-ring diameters myself because I didn't know the exact diameter. The spring still has to push this piston up and out, but at the same time, the small O-ring, which is right here on this piston, has to seal the oil from not pushing up and out of the valve body. So what I then did, I measured up the old O-ring to get a rough reference of this O-ring, which is on the piston right here. And I managed to find the correct one after measuring it with three different O-ring sizes. The cross section, which I first started off with, was 1.7 and the inside diameter is 3.1. These are metric O-rings, so if you guys want to purchase these O-rings, you have to buy them in the metric size. This O-ring, which was a cross section of 1.7, was too big. I put it on the piston and I inserted it within the valve body and when I pushed it down, it did not retract up and out of the valve. Why is that? It's because the cross section is too large for the spring to retract the piston up and out. So that means it would seal too much and would not allow the piston to come up and out of the valve body. The other set of O-rings that the company had was a 1.5 by 3.1 ID metric O-ring. I tried this and it did retract the piston up and out of the valve body but then what I ran into was still a leaky valve body and that was my initial issue on this valve body. So they had to order in a special size, but this happens to be the correct size, which is a 1.6 millimeter cross section O-ring by 3.1 millimeter inside diameter. I did order a couple more because I noticed on my John Deere 300 that something was leaking on the rear end and it was for sure these valve bodies right here. So this right here happens to be the John Deere 300 rear end. I already had everything assembled, but as you guys can see, the valve body and the piston is leaking on the top. When it was running, this was leaking even more than usual and dripping off to the side and down, and I noticed a leak on the concrete below. So I will be replacing these, and that's why I also purchased an extra pair of those O-rings. This one and this one will be repaired, but not in today's video. I will go ahead and repair the ones on the table. So the first thing I will be doing in today's video is taking the old leaky valve body and disassembling it so you guys understand this process. So the first step is to remove both O-rings on the valve as well as the Teflon washer, which is a backing washer. Just remove those before we go over to the bench grinder. I do have my safety glasses on and I will be using the rougher side of the bench grinder. If you guys don't have a bench grinder, you guys can clamp the valve body in the vise and do this manually with the file. What we're looking to do in today's video is to remove this crimped surface, which is around the cap of the valve. Uh, this crimped on surface will go down a certain distance and this valve cap will be able to be removed once that's ground down. I will share with you guys the final product here. This is what it should look like. We have a little step and this step, focus, this step will hold our valve cap. We do not want to remove this step completely because we still need this step to place the cap back on once it's finished. So when I come over here to the bench grinder, I just want to make sure I'm grinding off that crimped area. So now I'll share with you guys how I do that. I finished up on the bench grinder and now I'll head over to the vise and do the final touches to remove this valve cap. There's this thin layer of metal which is still crimped around the valve cap. 
as you guys can see here, it's lifting off. So now what you can do, if this is paper thin here, you can grab some pliers and just spin this cap and free this cap by spinning it and lifting on it slowly because this metal will just shear or break off since it's so thin. I shared with you guys how to dismantle the check valves and what parts are within the check valves. Now I'll go ahead and change that one o-ring which is 1.7 millimeter by 3.1 millimeter inside diameter. Once that's changed, I can reassemble it and then I'll bring you guys back for the next step. <laughs> So I'm on the final step over here at the vise. I have everything clamped down and the check valve is assembled. The check valve moves up and down freely without any issues. The new o-ring is in place and everything seems to be just fine. If you guys want to take an extra step, you guys can add automatic transmission fluid or any oil down into this passageway and let it sit upside down for a couple minutes to test it and see if it does not leak. If it does not leak, then the test is successful. If it does leak, then that could mean your valve body and or your piston are faulty or have the inaccurate measurement. So that's another test you guys can do before you guys weld this shut. But in my case, I can just weld this together and I know everything will be great. Over here on my right, I have my flux core welder. This is one of the cheapest welders out there but I will be using it in today's video to merge the valve cap to the valve body. It was previously crimped on, but I do not have that lip on there anymore. So I will be tack welding it on three spots and I will give you guys right now a close up view on how I will do that. What I will be doing with the welder, I will weld the cap to the valve body. And if you guys can see back here, there is this little seam. And what I wanna do is merge the valve cap to the valve body. So my best bet will be to add a tack weld on this side right here and not from the side. I wanna add it on the front or on the top end of this cap to merge it with the valve body. If I do have any excess weld around the perimeter, I wanna make sure that that's cleaned up. The depth or the length of the valve body is not so important, but the diameter is important. So we're gonna weld this from the top right here, and we'll give it three tack welds around the perimeter. One right here, here, and then one from behind. <laughs> both check valves and everything went as planned. I finished up one and I also cleaned it up with the file and the other one I left raw before the filing and I'll give you guys a close up on this right now. I have both check valves in my hand. The left one has been finished up and I also filed up the weld along the outside diameter of the valve body. The right one will still need to be touched up. As you guys can see, the weld is still off 
the outside diameter on all three points. And the final product should look something like this. The weld is nicely cleaned up around the outside diameter. And that's how it should look like. You want to make sure that your spot weld isn't too big, but at the same time that it holds the cap to the valve body. If your valve body looks like this and the weld has been cleaned up, you can then install both O-rings on the top and bottom, as well as the Teflon seal, which is in this area. You can then double check the spring as well as the bearing ball if they move and function properly, just to double check. Another thing is if you heat this area up too much with a bigger weld, it is possible that you distort or that you change the properties of the spring behind the bearing ball. So you really want to focus on small welds and that's why I only made three around the perimeter. So I hope you guys learned something today. Uh, this was the first time I did this. Uh, I knew there was an o-ring inside. I just didn't know how I could get to it. I did repair it now and I repaired it on both valve bodies. So I can go ahead and install these and I will not have any leaks in the near future or at least for a very long time. So if you guys like this video, please hit that like button down below. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. I'll have a whole bunch of how-to videos and rebuild videos on the machines that I'm rebuilding currently. So as always, stay tuned.